The next talk is uh, by Mariano. He's using this to en enable an ultra-fast evaluation of thin film properties, composition and thickness gradients. Um, and maybe, I'm not sure what the point of that presentation is since we already should know everything now <laughs> about Raman, but I'm still looking forward to it. Mariano, the floor is yours. Thank you, Moritz. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me here. And I will keep on talking about, uh, about um, Raman. And I'm actually a PhD student of the previous, uh, of my PhD student. Uh, and he's, uh, he's been doing actually most of the work that I'm presenting. So he had a 20 minutes presentation and I'm giving it in his behalf, more or less. Um, so the, the idea here is, uh, as you probably are very aware, there are many, many different molecules that you can use. We estimated that in the past few years, the, the, there's all the order of uh, about 5,000 new molecules being studied for organic photovoltaics. And the idea is that for each so of these molecules, you have to find the, the right acceptor or the right donor. And then you, uh, you need to optimize quite a few di different parameters for each, for each of those combinations. And in many cases, they are correlated. So for, if you want to evaluate an, a new system, that takes a, a lot of time. So what we thought, uh, uh, how are we going to find the needle in the, in the high stack? So what, what, how are we going to be able to find this 20% solar cell or organic solar cell? Uh, and according to Xavier, this picture is his, uh, and uh, this is how I will look in a, in a few years. I don't know if that's, that's the case. As you see, he's a very, very funny guy. Um, so the, the, the idea that we had is, the, is to, if you think of uh, high throughput methods, and we, we had a really nice talk earlier, uh, earlier on this, uh, this week, uh, typically, you, you, can, you can do lots of small samples and vary the, the parameters of interest. Uh, and typically, this requires some uh, either advanced robotics or, or very uh, advanced systems to measure. Uh, and uh, th there was some realization that, uh, that fabricating each device is typically quite uh, time consuming while measuring is very fast. So if you make, uh, let's say, 10 samples in parallel, it will take you uh, roughly a couple of days, while measuring those 10 samples will take you half an hour. So the, we, with this realization, we thought, how, how can we go to something more measuring uh, intense? And then we, we, we started to look into using gradients of the parameters of interest, and then to have uh, optic, uh, some, some probes that allow you to, to know the, the specific properties uh, in a, uh, locally. So for, for this type of method, what we will need, first of all, is a way of making gradients from solution this time, not from a spatula or a spray, but just normal from solution in methods that are compatible with the normal methods of fabricating organic solar cells. And on the other hand, a, a methods to characterize uh, the, the resulting solar cells. For, uh, for the photovoltaic performance, uh, I mean, the Harald Hoppe has done lots of work on actually doing a, a LBIC and this kind of technique. So it's pretty well known that you can do uh, scans uh, of the of photocarbon, for instance, if you just shine a laser and scan the sample. But it's much more difficult to actually identify what is the, the parameter that you thought that you had. If you, if you had a very controlled system, uh, uh, then you would not need to do this. But uh, normally, if you do it from solution, there is a lot of instab instabilities that would not give you a perfect gradient. Just some, some, somehow you need to characterize it. So uh, uh, this is what, what we need. And, uh, and because you know everything, obviously Raman is the solution for that question. Uh, this is uh, the same paper that Xavier was discussing. And basically, we, we, in this particular example, we are, we are using the, the, the fingerprinting capability uh, together with the idea that once you have the cross-section and the, and, the, and the spectra for a, a particular material, you can calculate both the, the thickness of your, of your material and the composition, provided within some limits, of course. Um, so we, we will use Raman to identify our gradients, and then how do you produce gradients? Uh, we we spent some time uh, looking actually at blade coating because it's something that afterwards we could do homogeneous films exactly in the same way. And uh, to make uh, thickness gradients uh, is quite easy to do with, uh, with uh, uh, changing the speed of the blade. Uh, for composition gradients, you, you need to put more than one drop simultaneously. Uh, and for different types, for instance, different types of crystallinity, you can do either a composition gradient with the additive, or you can use a coffler bench that is very useful to make a, a, a temperature uh, gradient in, in your sample. So we use all of this in, in the paper, and I just give you a flavor now. 
how it looks like. So this is a multi-pipette typically used in biology. So in, and you can put uh, two, two solutions, one's containing 100% fullerene, another 100% polymer, and you put the, the two drops, and if you control quite well the, the drying kinetics, you can produce something that looks like this, like, a, like a, has two different colors. And it's, as, as you can see, it's not, perfect, uh, it's not a perfect gradient, but it's actually a gradient. You have a, a gradient of composition from one side to the other, as we can show with Raman. So the, the, if you, have, you, you, can, you can have the map of composition, but you can also have the map of thickness. And then if you go to, with, the, with Harald's LBIC, then you can also have the photocarrier map. Uh, you can do this for as many systems as you like. In, it's just basically one sample in which you are doing this. This is a, another example for, another example, example for PTB7, TH, uh, and together with fullerene. And, uh, and then the, the nice thing is that you can extract the X and Y from here. And uh, basically you have a, a, an image like this in which you have film thickness, volume fraction, and this is what you get. Imagine that you ask a PhD student to make about 10,000 devices to, to have a statistics. This is a statistics, uh, I think I believe that. <laughs> and I, from here you can, you can know the window of parameters that are good for your material in terms of thickness and, and uh, in terms of, uh, of volume fraction uh, for the photocurrent. Typically, we do a, a next step, which is a thickness gradient also, uh, to make sure that the, the field factor is not, uh, to, to make sure that the, the photocarnic was a good proxy for the determination of, the, of whether this material is good or not. Uh, typically now, for a new system, we, it takes us about less than 10 milligrams to evaluate whether the material is good or not for, for solar cells. And, uh, and then you can do some calculations, which is good for, for when you have to justify projects and so on to say that you are 100 times faster than your competitors and these things. Uh, but uh, since we started uh, less, uh, about a year ago, we, we were able to, to go to be a lab that fabricated 2-3% uh, devices and, and quite quickly we, we go to, to 9% and we are extending this uh, currently. So th this is what is published in this paper. But now we are looking, for instance, at uh, not acceptors as well. And this is just a, a, another example. Where, where you can you can show the PTB7 with the ITIC, and you see the same thing. You can you can use the same parameters to form gradients of composition, and then you very, com compare the Raman uh, signal with the LBIC, and then you have a very nice and statistically very meaningful uh, um, uh, optimum for the composition. And this width here is basically thicknesses, different thicknesses, which is what you what you can see there. We have extended this, uh, the, all of the Rama modeling uh, for, for Mr. Rodriguez to, to also do a look at bilayer structures, and in this case it's evaporated. And then what we do is a double gradient, uh, sorry, a double gradient, uh, or orth orthogonal gradient of the layer underneath and the layer on top. And this case is for, is for, for copper talocyanin and PTCBI. And then from, 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 this, uh, from this bilayer structure, you map the structure again with the Raman. You obtain the thicknesses of the two layers. And with the LBIC, you get the photocarbon map. And then you can, you can try to, to, to look at the optimum uh, thickness for the two layers. What is the, the optimum for, for each one of the layers? Uh, last but not least, we, we are now just uh, went the, the step further in terms of the, 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 the method. Uh, and we are now coupling all together. So the, with the same piece of equipment, we are measuring, uh, we, are, we are doing Raman, but then we are using the light of the Raman to measure photocurrent. So in, a, in exactly the same device at the same time, co-locally, simultaneously, you can measure the photocurrent. And this is just an example of some samples that, uh, that uh, Antonio Guerrero uh, sent us, in which you, you can see, uh, you can see some, some structures with, which are very, very clear in the, in the Raman and the PL. Uh, now look at the scale, now it's 200 microns. This is much more precise than what we were seeing before. Uh, but it's very nice because you have a one-one correlation between photocarbon and Raman. And with this, I finish, just on time, I think, uh, to show you that the group can self-assemble into beautiful gradients as well. And uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. So again, I'm probably no quite no. Um, are there, we have got time for one short question. First one wins. The high resolution in your Raman image, is this tip enhanced Raman? No, no. Or just normal the, micro Raman? Diffraction limited, yeah. I wish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much again. Thank you.